long before kingdoms, before cities, before even the spark of fire. There were shadows moving through the forest. She's pregnant, massive, silent, alert. Her long toes grip the earth as she walks upright. Not quite human, not quite ape. Her orange fur is damp with morning mist, and her wide eyes scan every sound in the trees. Behind her, a male, just as upright, holds four newborns wrapped in green leaves. Their faces look like ours. Too much like ours. Wide-eyed, round-cheeked, fragile. This is not mythology. This is not fantasy. This is the real beginning. 4.4 million years ago, in what we now call Ethiopia, a new kind of being walked the earth. Her name, at least what science calls her, is Artipithecus Ramidus. But you can think of her as the first walker, the first gatherer, the mother of everything. She wasn't strong, she wasn't fast. She had no claws, no fangs, no tools, but she had legs, upright legs, and that changed everything. Imagine a world of volcanic ash, thick jungle, and death around every corner. Giant hyenas, saber-toothed cats, crocodiles as long as buses. You don't get second chances here. Every step is survival. Every berry, a risk. Every cry from your baby, a call to predators. But they learned. They didn't dominate the forest with violence. They adapted with cooperation. For the first time in evolutionary history, males stuck around. Fathers carried babies. Mothers taught foraging routes. The clan wasn't just blood. It was bond. These early hominins created the first kind of society. One built not on language, but on trust. They scavenged more than they hunted, watched more than they attacked. They knew the way birds moved before rain. They knew which roots healed and which poisoned. And when a leopard dragged a gazelle into the trees, they waited, waited until the feast was over, then picked the bones clean. You might call it primitive, but it was genius because for the first time in Earth's history, Something walked upright, looked at its hands, and saw possibility. The forest floor was a living map. Every vine had meaning. Every footprint told a story. And Artie's people, those small, wide-hipped walkers, read it like scripture. They weren't just surviving. They were noticing. The shape of a chewed leaf. The silence of absent birds. The cracked shell of a broken egg. All clues, all messages, all passed down. Not through words, but through imitation. Mothers didn't just forage alone. They led the young, step by cautious step, pointing, pausing, waiting for tiny hands to mimic their own. That was the lesson, learn or die. They used no fire, no tools but their minds were catching sparks. You see, once your hands are free, when you walk instead of crawl, you begin to carry things. Food, babies, memories, and that changes your brain. With every journey deeper into the forest, the world opened up. Their range expanded. Their routines changed. They didn't just stick to one tree, they wandered. And the wandering made them smarter. They found berries in the morning and remembered where. They followed a predator one day and learned its habits the next. They recognized that some plants grew back and some didn't. The forest was their school, their enemy, their home. But it wasn't just what they gathered that mattered. It was how they shared it. The clan, small and tight-knit, was bound by invisible threads. Mothers helped each other. Fathers groomed each other's children. Food was shared not because it was easy, but because it was necessary. And from that necessity came something sacred. 
Empathy, that's where it started. Not in a religion, not in a temple, but in the dirt, in hunger, in the trembling hands of a starving child being offered a fruit. Over time, some families grew closer, others drifted apart, but the ones who stayed passed something deeper than DNA. They passed wisdom, ritual, pattern. And those patterns, they became the first blueprint for culture. Theirs was a language of movement, a grammar of touch, a survival that depended not on domination, but devotion. They didn't know it yet, but they were building the foundation for everything that would come next. And now, 4.4 million years later, you're here, watching this, with fire at your fingertips, shelter at your command, and the knowledge of millennia behind your eyes. But it all began in the mud, with trembling hands, with wide-eyed children carried through ancient forests by beings who didn't know your name, but made your existence possible. They didn't build monuments. They left no written words. But their legacy lives in your bones, in your breath, in the quiet part of you that still remembers how to survive. If this story moved you, if you felt even a flicker of that ancient fire, they lit it first, and we carry it now. So honor their memory, keep learning, keep exploring. And if you want to walk deeper into the human story, hit that like button, subscribe and join us as we uncover the forgotten truths of our species, one step at a time. Because history isn't just in the past, it's in you.